Normally, we are used to immediately start in our political uh, contributions with technical details, with political battles. Today, I want to speak first about people, about their health, their courage, their efforts, their fears, and probably also their pain. The nurse in Madrid who was uh, infected while helping a patient. Uh, the doctor in Bergamo who had to decide about life and death in the last weeks. And probably the young researcher in Tübingen who worked day and night trying to find a possible cure to stop this pandemic. I mention these examples to show that the heroes of this crisis are not politicians, managers or media stars. The stars have been the millions of Europeans who helped, engaged and took care of all of us. Thank you very much from the bottom of our heart. All of you, no words can ever be enough to thank you for your engagement. Now we have to do our job as politicians. Now it's our turn. And the CPP group, we strongly support the general architecture which is now on the table. To have an ambitious, future-oriented MFF and we add a recovery plan, a recovery fund, which is really delivering to the demands of today's European Union. And speaking about the architecture of this new mechanism, for us as EPP, the key element is, for, is to fight for a democratic budget. A budget decided by the people represented here in this chamber. A budget based on solidarity among people and nations in the European Union. A budget that is honest with the people and a budget that cares for the people. Uh, we want to have our sovereignty back was one of the main messages in the Brexit campaign. I tell you, this successful message reflected on the problem that people don't feel involved in the European decision-making process. And that's why it's so important that not Brussels decides about the recovery fund, a kind of an external power decides. No, my MEP decides about the future of the European Union and about the recovery program. It must be in the hand of those who are elected for this. No budget without democratic legitimacy. That is one of the principles uh, in the European way of life. And this promise was given by the European Commission. Um, and I would say now it's the time to deliver. And to the Council, I want to say it's not the time for institutional battles in this field. I think it's the time to guarantee also from a Council point of view a democratic Europe as a principle for the future. A second consideration for us as EPP group is that people don't care about a procedure. They only care about concrete projects and the concrete support. And in this spirit of the last weeks, a spirit of solidarity among the Europeans, we have to focus also on those who really need now our help amongst the most affected regions and especially about the young generation. I want to put this into the center in my second point, uh, that we already faced in the last 12 years a kind of a lost generation in the European Union, where millions of young people, well-educated, well-prepared people, had no chance on the labor market to really succeed. And I want to underline that Europe cannot allow to have now again a lost generation facing the future of the European Union. That's why the investments are needed. Europe has to give the young generation hope. The third aspect I want to underline is to be honest when it is about the MFF. We have to keep our promises, what I gave to the voters, what we gave to the voters last year as well. And there is one aspect which Ursula von der Leyen already rightly underlined, that is about the future investments, about climate change, about the question of stronger investments in research, about the digital world, about education, fight against cancer or today against corona, to do it together with common activities. And we must not forget our regions and farmers, I want to underline this, we must be fair with everybody. Cohesion and agriculture policy is today one of the tools where we show already solidarity in today's European Union. That's why it must be properly financed as well. And finally, as a final point, I want to underline that we have to take care about the preparation of future emergency situations we will face in the European Union. We cannot promise that we will be able to avoid another pandemic in the future. Nobody can do so. But we can make sure that Europe is much better prepared for the next uh, 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 pandemic or for the next crisis. We need flexibility. We need own resources. We have to create tools for a quick and decisive response if there is a, a, an unexpected situation in front of us. After the crisis, we want to see a united Europe where all parts of our union will economically recover. 
After the crisis, we want to see a united Europe which invests into the future projects, which creates economic future for our young generation. And after the crisis, we want to see on global level a Europe that is the first out of the crisis. That is what we want to achieve. And probably this is the Schumann moment of our generation, having your words also in mind. We have to be clear on this and we have to be motivated by the courage, courage we saw from the nurses, from the doctors, from all those who delivered in the last weeks. That is what we should use as an example. Let's act now. Thank you.